Okay, Samantha McNally is an award-winning watercolor artist in the San Francisco Bay Area. She paints a myriad of subjects that includes landscapes, animals, water, abstract, and flowers <clears throat> in the studio <clears throat> and outdoors plein air. In addition to painting, Samantha is a webmaster for art associations and artists. Samantha studied art in R Ramapo College in Mawa, New Jersey, Ridgewood School of Art in Ridgewood, <clears throat> New Jersey, and the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Award-winning artist Samantha McNally is a member of the California Water Color Association. Samantha's paintings hang in the Valley Art Gallery in Walnut Creek, California, and in Arts Venetia, HQ Gallery, and Once Upon a Canvas, I think also in Venetia. Samantha has served as the president of the California Water, Watercolor Association from 2007 to 2010, and as communications director in 2011. From 2011 to 2018, she was the California Water Association's plein air chairperson. She was accepted into the 2012 Frank Bett Alameda plein air the 2016 Capitola Plein Air and 2017 Carmel Plein Air competitions. And with that, here is Samantha. Thank you. Today I'll do a, a demo of watercolor. So I will, first I would like to share my screen and show you um, the photos that I'm working from. So I went out uh, over where I live in El Sobrante, there's Alhambra Valley Road, which leads me from El Sobrante to, to Concord or to Walnut Creek area. And along there, there's always cows and all kinds of animals, things going on, beautiful hills. And this picture I took a while back, it's the, the cows are dark, but I thought the picture was so beautiful, um, but I wanted to lighten it up. And there's a tool you can use on, um, on your iPhone called Waterlog. It's an app. And you put your photo into that app and it turns it into a watercolor and it brightens up the colors, makes it more, more bright colors. I also um, went into Photoshop and made more sky. See the original picture just has a tiny little V of sky. So you can change a lot of things around if you have a pretty good photo, but it's not good enough for a painting. You can do all these things first to see what it might look like. So I, I made it, um, um, changed the picture for the sky, brightened up the colors of the animals, and I'm not going to put the fence in. So those are my decisions that I've made ahead of time for this one. So in my class, I usually uh, I give a, I give a drawing um, of what we're going to paint. This was uh, something for the future, but we haven't gotten to it yet. So I'm going to do it tonight instead. Um, so that's I'm going to stop the share of that. So that's that's my. Um, procedure to begin with. Let's see here. So now I'll spotlight this one and turn on my bright light so you can see the painting. So what I did um, also to um, get ready for this painting was put on some masking fluid. What I use is what's called a ruling pen and I think this is something that architects use. It's this little tool called a ruling pen. And this is the masking fluid, it's called drawing gum. And it's this blue color. You can also get, um, if you don't like the blue color, you can get aquarelle, um, white um, masking fluid, but the blue doesn't bother me. You can see it there. So it took about an hour or so to dry. 
So you have to you have to do it a little bit ahead of time. So I don't like to talk too much because everybody wants to see the painting get started. Sometimes um, people do demos and they talk for way too long. <laughs> so usually I do the sky first, but I think for this one I want to do the area around the masking fluid because possibly we could take the masking fluid off at the very end of this demo if I if if that area is dry. So I think it'll be I think I'll do um, I have to go if I go back well here I can show you this this is the picture. I would I would want to paint the green hills and behind the cows in the where the light is hitting the flowers because that's the green is in this area behind these flowers the bottom half is in the shade so it's a different color green so what I do is I mix up um, phthalo green this is Daniel Smith colors so I have phthalo green and um, quinacridone gold and uh, bright yellow, whatever bright yellow. Can't remember which, which yellow I had, but uh, this is quinacridone gold and that's the brighter yellow color. So I made a dark green and a light green, a yellowy green. And I would use a number 14 brush. I always use pointed brushes for some reason, I think because they can hold a lot of water and and you can paint um, you can you can paint a good area a good big area i should start on the right the left side because i'm right handed i'm just going to get inside the the masking fluid. So when you put masking fluid on, generally I don't even use masking fluid, but I think for a demo, if I want to try to do a painting kind of faster, it helps. It helps you because uh, otherwise I would be painting really slowly, carefully around everything in this area where the flowers are. Right now, I'm just have to, I have to paint around the, the cows. But one thing I have to remember too is, I I um I watched a demo once of an artist who had an analogy that. The, the paint paint you're when you're painting it's like um, the soldiers in the Revolutionary War they're all they all have to go together along the in the field and if one guy goes out all by himself it's he's in a big danger out there all alone because in watercolor it's going to dry out so you have to Keep your soldiers together in a row and keep a big puddle of paint in your palette so you have enough and you don't have to worry about quickly mixing up more paint. A lot of times watercolor feels like a big emergency and it's only because you're not prepared ahead of time with the paint in a big puddle or getting your soldiers out there all by themselves too quickly. There's all kinds of little cute, funny analogies that I've heard over the years of different teachers that help you remember certain things. So there's a couple little lobs that I'm leaving in this hill and those are little cows way up in the distance. So I'm just leaving a little white spot for them because they're going to be a little reddish brown color later.
So I see some things happening here on this paper. And sometimes this happens with watercolor paper. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little spot here that's not letting the paint sink in. And that's uh, some kind of, oh, here, somebody's in the waiting room. It's some kind of um, damage on the paper or something like that. But it's up there on the top of the hill, so I'm not going to worry about it because it can just be a dirt spot on the hill or something like that. If this was a, a bl big blue smooth sky and that happened, then I would be upset. Which happens sometimes with some papers. But on this one, you don't even mind if the um, if you get blooms and things happening on the on the hill because it's a hillside and that's what it looks like. So if you have any questions while I'm painting, feel free to ask. Do you worry about the um, pencil lines showing? No, there's uh, the white eraser. The, I use the kneaded eraser while I, when I'm drawing it or um, while I'm painting, if there's a reason to erase something because it doesn't damage the, the paper. It's very gentle on the paper. And then there's a white eraser that you can use that really is strong and really gets the, the pencil line out. So I, I, you can really scrub it hard when you're all the way done and you're not gonna touch it with the brush anymore because it will damage, you will do little weird damages if you're painting again on top of it after you've done that. So you wanna wait like a day or two and then you can really scrub it with that white eraser. Okay, so that's that's the hillside. And um, there's gonna be some more detail, like a little um, separation of the hills there, but I can do that later. Um, let's see. Okay, this part is a light also. The light is hitting this area. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I wanted to fill in all the, these spots here are in the shade, but the, the cows are behind those white flowers. So I think in that case, I do have to wait until the green is dry before I can go touch another color right next to it. So I'm gonna wait a minute and, and do the cows. I think I could do, that's how you decide. You just decide like what, you're, what you wanna paint next by what it's, what's not touching anything. Like down here in this shadows, there's some really pretty purple I'm still looking at this waterlogged version because I could look at the photo, but as you can see, it's so dark and not colorful at all. The waterlog really helps you, um, there, really helps you get a sense of how, what you can do to make it better. Oops, upside down. So, I'm gonna mix up some purple. I use Daniel Smith colors. So I'm gonna use um, phthalo blue and carmine to make a purple color. Carmine is the red. And it's more of a bluish purple. So I'm gonna make it bluer than red. And there's these kind of blue colors down here. They're like, it looks like iris or something kind of. No, maybe, what are those called? Um, the, it starts with the H, the spring 
blue colors, flowers. Yeah. What are they? Lupin. Mm, maybe they are Lupin, yeah. I'm from New Jersey originally, so my, and my grandmother had some blue bulbs that were like this, but I can't remember the name, but that's, pr that's probably Lupin out here. Lupin or Hyacinth. Hyacinth, that's the one. Yeah. But these are probably Lupin. And I don't know what these little white flowers are, but they're so pretty. So I'm just putting in some purples down here. I can... <coughs> I can go ahead, there's a lot of greens in here too. I don't wanna have all only hard edges so I can go in with some greens and touch some of the purples. So it's a soft a transition in some places. And then other places I can go back in when it's dry and leave some hard edges. So I think in watercolor, it's nice to have a little bit of both soft and hard edges. So I'm just switching back and forth from a little bit of a darker green. Using two different brushes for the different colors. No, I just keep, every time I touch one, I, I rinse my brush off. Okay. And then pick up another color. So I'm, I end up most of the time just using one brush kind of by mistake all the time because you're concentrating so much on what you're doing. And especially when you're doing a demo, you have to talk and paint at the same time, which is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if I trail off, that's why, because I'm trying to paint and talk at the same time. Yeah. So did you say what kind of paper you're using or? Oh, Arches 140 pound okay. is what I use. Did you wet it first or anything or? I don't, and, and I'm painting um, wet on dry, so I don't even use that those kind of techniques very much. I just taped it down to the, the board that I have. And, um, and it's so far it's staying pretty flat. If I don't paint super wet, it will stay flat. What I'm doing right now is um, softening these edges in some spots here, because I don't want to have such hard edges. I'm, I think I'm I'm going to soften some edges and then come back to this area. So if you want to, if you, you know, the phone rings or something happens in the house, you have to quick stop painting. You can just soften up all the edges. Hmm. You have to tell whoever's bugging you, just wait a minute. Let me just soften the edges. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can come back to it later and it won't be a hard edge that you didn't want to have there. So that's what I just did. And it also, I'm just adding water and it gives you a nice effect too sometimes. Maybe, maybe I just want to leave it like that. That looks kind of cool. It's just a field of flowers. So it doesn't have to be, when I get up here, I'm going to leave some more white flowers, but right now it's these purples and greens. Okay, so what I wanted to do was once these are dry, I think uh, I, I want to do some of the cows. So um, I don't have a brown on my, on my palette. So I make a brown with cobalt blue and quinacridone burnt scarlet. And quinacridone burnt scarlet and cobalt blue also make a gray, so it depends on which one you have more of. If you put more quinacridone burnt scarlet in, you'll have a brown. And if you put more quinacridone burnt, uh, if you put more cobalt blue in, you'll have a uh, gray. Hmm. 
So, and when you have like rocks or something that you need a gray and a blue, uh, brown together, those two colors are perfect because they, they make a good like um, granulation effect on the painting also. Okay, so I should show what I'm doing. Uh, this is, no, that's not, is that cobalt? Number. I don't think so. I have cobalt. I have another palette right next to me. So that's quinacridone mert scarlet and that's cobalt blue. And you can see if I have more blue right there, it's a gray color. But if I go over here and have more orange, more burnt scarlet, then it turns a brown. So that's what I'm going to use for the cows. And some of them are more reddish than brownish, like this guy over here. He's like he's very reddish red color. He's almost pure. So it's just the second half of him. Oh, I, I forgot to. So I forgot to put. Uh, the masking fluid right here for where the flowers are. So this is what I would do if I was, if I had no masking, I would just leave little, little dots for the flowers. But when there's masking there, I can just go right over it. Um, and then I need a dark color because he has shadow. So I'm going to use purple to do his dark shadow down here. I'm part of him. And I'm just touching the color right on top. And that makes it mingle together and make a, a nice dark shadow like that. So that's the, the back half of a cow, which you don't can't really tell what it is now, but when the painting's all done, you're, it'll just look like it since there's other cows there. Most of the time in paintings, you can just do a indication of something and the viewer's brain will fill it in, fill in the blanks. Some of these cows, this is uh, just really dark. Because they're they're in the they're still in the shadow. The only thing that's in the light is the background white flowers that are that are masked. They have the they they look blue now because they have the masking fluid on them. But you'll see when when I'm able to take the masking fluid off. Hopefully it'll be dry enough. This cow, um, it's it's a very dark. shadowed cow, but I'm making it purple because it actually, in the waterlogged version, it looks a little bit purple. And that's what's so cool about that app is because you can use it to enhance or just get an idea of what you, what you might want your watercolor to look like. It really is helpful. Uh, um, this this cow is going to have to have some detail put on him after it's all dry to have a little bit extra shadow um, in the detailed spots to give him an actual face. Because, and I want to try to be a little more careful around the outside edges. And then when I get to this cow, I have, it's still wet. So I have to leave a teeny tiny little white area. And if, even if I, if I touch it a little bit and it spreads in, that's okay. It's, it's one of those pretty effects of watercolor anyway, so it's fine. So this side here is spreading a little bit into the grass, but these are the kind of things that make soft, pretty watercolor effects. And when you add other colors in, like if I, 
touch a little bit of the brown, I made this guy pretty much purple, but if I touch a little of the brown into it, it also looks very pretty. That has some good watercolor effects. And I'm gonna add more, like I said, I'll put more shadows in. You can see this cow, see how he looks. I'll put some darker shadows in on uh, to form his head and his face later on when it's dry. And there's a couple other guys back here that you can't really see um, exactly what is what part of the body it is, but I think it's a, a cow facing out of the painting this direction. Mm. So I'm, I can just put the shape of him in there. Like that, and I'll just fill in this area here. So these cows, they're not important. That's the, the main uh, center of interest is around this area, these, these guys, maybe this guy, because he has a nice white face. All right, so keep going. Um, he has a split ear. Some cows have that, so I wanna make that show up a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna do the same, I'll, I'll paint him. I'm gonna put in a little bit of blue on his face here, but pretty much paint him dark purple and brown. I just use purple mostly for my shadow color because I love purple. And it doesn't really matter which color you use on your shadows. Um, when I do trees, purple is the shadow color. So his face is lighter, so that's why I made it kind of a bluish color there. Oh, we have a glare on that one. But again, I will have to go back in later and when it's dry and add some sh dark shadows on top. Because right now they're just gonna be fuzzy. So here's some brown. And I'm going into the masking fluid area because I did want to try to do that in the beginning of this demo so that it could possibly be dry enough to take off before, before we end. We'll see if that's the case though. Top of him is a little bit lighter. Do you use a hair dryer? I never usually do. No, I could. I have one. I, I never use it on my hair. <laughs> no, I don't use it. I don't usually use it. But yeah, for a demo, it would probably be a good idea. There's a couple little guys back here, way in the distance. And the distant cows really don't need anything except just a, a spot of color, like these up here too. They're just little dots of colors. You could put a little leg on them or, and this guy has a little shadow, which is good. I can put a little shadow underneath them. I think there's a little couple legs on the, this one. But it's not, yeah, this one has some shape to it. 
like I said, though, the, your the viewer's mind will fill in the fact that you're looking at cows up there. And actually, if you ever make a mistake, you can always take a paper towel and touch it. I want to make this one a little bit more reddish. Not so they're not all the same color. I don't even know if you can see that in the video, but. I think more, normally I'd be a little more careful than this, but I'm trying to hurry. Sometimes when you're not being super particular and careful, you make a nice, a better painting because you're not too fussy about it. And I love the way the colors mingle together. Look at that cow. Doesn't that look cool? I just yeah. love how watercolor does that. Okay, so I have to do this guy behind him. And he's a little bit lighter than the rest of them because he's more near the sun in the background. Except the bottom of him is dark. And around his neck is darker. So even though I'm going to put darker colors in later, I can still do it while it's wet. Oh, I'm going to go that way. That's supposed to be white there. So even if you make a mistake, you can touch it with a paper towel, lift it off while it's still wet. No need mm -hmm. to panic. But watercolor. I don't know if any of you have tried watercolor. It does make you feel like a panic a little bit. Because you have, to, like I said, you have to hurry and get the colors color in. If you're fill, filling a big wash, a big area so that it doesn't, so that it all um, stays smooth. And you have to remember to leave your whites. But as I've done it now over the years, I realize there is white wash. If you ever really have to add a little bit of white to something, you can use white wash. You could use a white, um, a white paint pen. This is a, a white paint. This is what I use mostly to sign my paintings, a white paint pen or gel pens, you can use these Ouhu. You, there's all kinds of colors. You can use a white gel pen to put just, you know, just for small things like maybe a whiskers or a star in the sky, something you might've forgotten that was, it's very small. You don't wanna use too much of it probably. But I have ruined a watercolor sky and fixed it with gouache and watercolor, white gouache and watercolor paint. And I've just done a, a whole new sky all around it, all on top of it, I mean. And it's and it works out perfectly. So there are things you can do. You don't have to give up on a painting if something, something like that happens, you can fix it. All right, let's see. He has a little bit of a nose. Okay, so now So now the um Now the cows are done. But I think I probably could go a little bit more into the flowers with so where I didn't do masking fluid, this is how I would normally paint, just leaving some whites. And maybe there's some of the cow still showing behind the flowers. 
So I'll just bring it down a little bit further, but not too much. I have enough masking on there. So what's happening underneath here is, so they're white flowers, but they are a little bit shadowed. They're shadowed, so they're a little bit bluer than pure white. So they're a little bit purpley kind of color. So I want them to read as white, but so I'm just putting a little bit of purple down. If you're if you're doing flowers with um, green grass or green foliage around them, you would want to put the flowers first so that you know where they are. And because if you're if you put the green first, when you're touching the light color of the flowers to it, it, it could drag some green into the flower. And you're trying to have pure color for the where the flowers are. So hopefully this will look like these flowers are in the shade. And then these flowers up here. Once I take the masking, they're going to be white, pure white. Let's see. Do you have any um, tricks or anything using that pen, that uh, architecture pen for putting on the mask it, oh, masking fluid? That, that is something I was going to actually show you how, how that works. I'll do that. So you want to um, do it on a place where you, where if this, I have this nice white towel, I don't want to get it wrecked. So I'm going to put it, put some, a paper towel here, because I have ruined the towel by spilling this stuff on it. So what I do is I pour it into the, there, see, I pour it into the lid. And then I can take the ruling pen and you can open it and close it with this little wheel. In closing it gives you, will give you a smaller um, dot or, or line. So I just dip it in and then I can make whiskers on a cat or whatever, little dots for, for flowers, um, whatever you need to do, you can write a word if you're skilled at it. If you're making a, like a sign on a building or something, I'm doing this really sloppy, but you can get the, get the point of it. So it's, it's better than a brush because a brush, you ruin a brush with this stuff. Plus, you can't get a really thin line with a brush. You know, if you need to fill in a big space, you can use a brush. But I think this ruling pen and um, it works really well. It's, you can control the masking fluid. So then when I'm done, I just pour it back in. Usually I try to clean it out because that'll get It'll get a little bit stuck, but it when it dries, it's just like rubber. It just you can just peel it right off and throw the the dried part away. So that's the drawing gum. It's PBO drawing gum and a ruling pen. And I just ordered them on Amazon, so they're easy to find. Everything's on Amazon. All right. So I have they and they look like they look like flowers that are in the shadow. And there's uh, so I'm just doing the lightest purple color now, and I'm just dotting my dotting my paper with 
I'm just making little marks. Um, before it's dry, I can touch some a little bit of darker purple in because there's little shadows in amongst the shadowy purples. Give it a little bit of different color. I'll probably, I could put in a little bit of green now too, but that's the thing. It's just going to bleed into the... Uh, purples and I don't want to do that too much because I want to save the purples. So I won't do that anymore. I'll put in the, the green at, after this is dry and that'll be a little tedious because I'll have to carefully go in there and add the greens in but it looks good also with a little bit of white showing too so it'll just depend how what what I need to um, what I think I need to do to make it look like it's in the shadow. I might not want to leave any of these whites at the end. I can go back with another pass of light, light purple and do that. So some of these spots that I left too, these can be, I should have left some little fl more flowery um, areas. I can do that down here. But this in the foreground gets all a lot darker anyway, so it's okay. And it doesn't have to be exactly like the photo. Nobody's gonna know that um, I did it a little bit differently than the photo. Oh, you won't tell them, right? And then I think over here, it gets green again. So I still have the puddle of green right next to me, so I don't have to hurry up and make more. I can just, it's nice to make big puddles of whatever colors you're going to be using. That helps cut down on the panic feeling also. You don't have to hurry up and make some more color. It's already right there. Except you do use it up quickly. I do have to make some more purple here. Just made a little bit more. This is very blue. Colors that you use to make purple. I didn't catch, did you say what they were? Yeah, so I use um, phthalo blue and carmine mm. you can have it carmine is very close to alizarin crimson if you have that a lot of the colors are interchangeable i started using a lot of daniel smith because i took a workshop from michael reardon he's a, a amazing watercolor artist he lives in oakland or something um but so the, so a lot of my colors on my palette are from from his palette. So if when you're taking classes, you know you there's a supply list, and sometimes you have to go out and buy all the colors that that teacher wants you to use. I don't really do that in my class because I you know everybody has colors. Most people already have some colors on their palette, and I can. You know, we can say, okay, if you don't have this one, you, you could use another one, a different color. And then if somebody wants to get more, you know, some of the colors that I have, they can, but it's not, you really can make a painting. I don't know what, there's a red blotch here. You can really can do it with whatever colors you have, pretty much. Sometimes some color, some brands are much better than others. like. Daniel Smith's a really good brand. And there's other ones that are also really good too. So it's, it depends on your preference. If you, whatever uh, medium you paint in, I'm sure you have, well, for watercolor, you put your paints into a palette 
like something like this and you have these paints and you use them but you also have like 10 of these palettes with all kinds of different colors in them <laughs> after throughout the years that's what i have anyway most watercolor artists i think have that problem you just keep finding new better paints and it's hard to stop buying things when you go to the art store But you, throughout the years, you just learn which ones you like the best. All right, so sometimes I get too fussy and I don't want that to happen. So I have to not do that tonight. Waste time on this stuff when I still have that to fill in. So that is more like this over here, more of these kind of flowers. Yep. These little shaded flowers here. I hope this will be dry enough to take the, when you take masking fluid off, it does have to be dry or you could down into the paper. Oh, and there's a big bloom that happened over here. I don't know if you can see this, but sometimes blooms, I don't mind them. This might look like um, flowers or something. So I don't usually when I see like a big bloom or something ha that happens, if I feel like, oh no, it's ruined. I don't ever dwell on a spot that I feel like, oh no, I have to fix it because I've done that in the past. And what happens is you wreck your painting because you're so worried about one tiny little spot that you work on it and work on it, work on it. And it becomes so important. And then everyone's gonna look right there because that's the spot you've made important. If you just leave it till the very end and don't even touch it, you, will, you might not even notice it anymore. So I've learned that. That's like one of my big lessons that I've learned. I think all artists make certain different mistakes and learn from them. And that's the one I just remember so many times where I would try so hard to fix something. And I'm only halfway through and it wouldn't have been a big deal if I had just left it alone. So that's, that's my lesson for you. <laughs> I sacrificed so that you could avoid that thing. All right, so If I was a minimalist, I would say it's done. Yeah. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do the sky. Sky. Yeah. Well, oh, it could sky. be a cloudy day. Yeah, it would have would be a very cloudy day, but it's a sunny day. You know, in the um, yeah, it's a sunny day, so I want to have a nice blue sky. So I use phthalo blue or um actually it's cerulean blue. So there's a uh, Mission is another brand. It's a it's from Korea. Or Mission Colors, and they have a cerulean blue that I really like, and it's like the Daniel Smith phthalo blue. So what I want is um, uh, I'm turning it around so I have the area I'm going to paint right close to me, so I don't have to lean over everything to get to it. So what I want is. Uh, a nice big puddle of paint, very wet. And a big, a biggish brush. I'm using the same one. It's a number 12. So there's little dots. So I'm just going to put the blue paint 
Try to make a nice smooth. Sky. And watercolor generally dries lighter. Yes, watercolor dries lighter. And see this little area I'm doing now right up to the edge of the hill. If I go on top of the hill with this blue, it'll make an outline like it just did right there. Mm. But I just touched. So I'm just like barely touching the green because I don't want to have a little dark outline on the top of the hill. And uh, my story about that is that when I first started painting in the 90s, I painted a uh, iris. And I didn't even realize about that outline problem where you're, when you're putting something around the edge of another color, unless this blue is really dark, if it's the same kind of um, value, you'll get an outline. When I made this iris painting, I hung it, framed it, hung it up. It was, it was so amazing. It was my first, one of my first paintings. And my dad came over to the house and said, why is there an outline around the whole thing? <laughs> uh, I didn't even notice it, but he noticed it. And then, so I'll never forget that. And I'll never make an outline again. So I think I don't have really an outline. You can see a little bit of an outline, but if that ever does happen, you, when it's all the way dry, you don't want to ever mess with stuff while it's wet in watercolor. If you ever have anything you have to fix, wait till it's completely dry and then mess around with it. When it's completely dry, I can take a clean, thirsty brush, which means it's wet and then it's dried off on a towel. And so it's clean and thirsty, but not it's, it, it's not totally dry. And then you can just scrub a little bit and it'll lift the outline right off. So if you ever have any little tiny spots that you need to lift off, that's how you do it. How's our time? Do we, how long do we have? It's eight o'clock. You still have a half hour. All right. We go to 8.30, correct, Phyllis? Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Now, will the sky dry that color or will it be lighter? It'll be lighter. Okay. It'll be lighter. And I think it's lighter in real life. Yeah, it'll be lighter. It's already getting lighter up here and yeah. over here. Okay. So yeah, it will be lighter. It is kind of dark, isn't it? It looks like really here. It could be the lighting. Yeah, it's. I think it's, it's darker on as well. Screen. So yeah. Um, which blue? I'm sorry. Which blue is that for the sky? Cerulean. I had. Oh, cerulean. I, uh, yeah, mission cerulean. And I and I had a little bit of like. Uh, one of those mineral, like um, Cabo, iridescent Cabo blue, I think mixed in with it, which I probably shouldn't have, mm. but it's okay. It's starting to dry and it'll, it'll, it'll be lighter. Up. And if I really don't like it, I like I said, I have paintings where I've painted a, um, I don't know if you can see, if I turn this off and turn my, video back on this painting right here it was a uh, it didn't work it didn't have a good background it had a blotchy background i took gray um i made a gray watercolor uh, puddle and added white gouache to it and then just smoothed out the whole sky so you can fix things with gouache and i think yep this one next to it same thing that painting had a terrible blue sky. If the cloud was good, you can hardly, you can't really see it. I should show you the real painting. But my only point is that you can fix, you can fix a sky or a, any part of your painting with using gouache if you really want, need to. I have this um, other tool. So you can take um, masking fluid off with your finger or with a masking fluid remover kind of sponge. It's like a 
rubbery thing. And it grabs the masking fluid and pulls it off. <coughs> and I wouldn't recommend doing this so soon after painting. I would say wait till tomorrow to do it. But if you're really careful, you can, because I know the green is dry. I just don't know if the cow is completely dry. But I want to see the flowers. So here are the white flowers in the sunlight. And these are the, the darker flowers in the shade. And I, the masking fluid was just so I could get some of these green little spots in between. And, you know, just also to show you how that works. I could have just done it the same way I did these flowers. Now I can tell um, what I have to do down here to make this look more like in the sh shadow. So I think I would need, now that these are dry, I can put fill the areas in that are white with some green. And this is kind of just little abstract kind of coloring in because I'm not trying to make a little any little petals or anything like that. It's just little shapes. So that this part looks, and, and of course, this is going to dry lighter too. These this green right now it looks kind of dark, but it's not. It's very light green actually. It's just that it's wet, so it looks dark. If I take a, it's just kind of a little puddle inside there. If I take a brush, you can take a clean, you can take a thirsty brush and and lift some color out too. If it's very wet, if it's too wet, you can just soak. The brush will soak up color for you. You just have to remember to clean it off if you're trying to get uh, it back to white. If you're ever lifting color off, you have to remember that the color is going on the brush, so you don't want to keep putting it down onto the paper if you're trying to lift it off. So there, that looks like, um, that looks like shadow. Looks like the flowers are in the shadow. And I think some of these flowers under the cow here, they'll have to be toned down to a little bit of purple too, because the, the sunlight is actually behind. It's like a strip of sunlight behind the cows. So that's what I would do to those. And this cow's face, he's a white face, but his face is in the shadow. So he needs a little tiny bit of a purpley wash on his face. So it still looks white. So I just put some purple down. And I realized, okay, that's too dark. So I clean my brush off with water. And now I'm just adding water all around it to spread it out onto this face area. Yeah. So that's what you can do. You can put color. And now I say, see, oh, maybe it wasn't there. If I just add a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple. The watercolor, if you know how to handle it, it does the job for you. So I just touched a little purple on there and it's gonna just softly spread. If it's spreading too much, I can take a paper towel and control it a little bit that way, dry off a little area. So just the top of his head. Yeah. He, they're, they're kind of backlit a little bit because the sun I don't know, they're standing under some trees here. So what else? Hmm. Um, in between the light purple in this shadow color of, these are still white flowers to remember, but there's some um, darker sh shadow colors in between. 
So I can sprinkle a little bit of those colors in here too on top. Mm. Not getting too dark. And I think it's looking okay. I think that this area, if I do that all the way across, it will look like, I'm, I'm changing the color a little bit to a little bit of a redder purple. You can switch things around. You don't have to do, you know, the same color all the way across. Maybe there's a little bit of a um, shadow, more sh purple shadows, but a little redder over here. Filling in this areas with green. I think, um, okay, it's only 8.10. But I wanna go up and do some of the, the hillside too. So really light color um, over here in between the, in between the hills, I'm going to just put a little bit of really light brown kind of color. Oops. How do you tell if it's dry enough? Um, if you touch it and it's not cold, and it you just yeah, you, uh, if it's cool to the touch, it's still too wet. But uh, if it's also you can look at it if it's glistening at all, it's too wet. But it's very, it's very warm, like not cool and it's not glistening. So I think it's, I think it also, I don't know, it's sometimes like after you've painted for so long, you don't even think of that. You just know automatically. But yeah, that's one of the things you have to look at. Oh, how do I get a smaller brush in my hand? Usually <laughs> I keep the same brush throughout the whole painting. Okay, so I put the lines down, but now I'm going to take just clean water and put it all next to this line because I don't want it to be just a line. I want it to be, you know, uh, just a, a little bit of a definition, but not a solid line. And then some of the, some of the dirt kind of Lines going are going up the, the hill a little bit and then a little bit of green maybe. I don't want to mess around with it too much because you can wreck it if you do too much to it. Mm -hmm. So if you I just put a little bit of color down and uh, kind of um, a dry brush effect. You can make it a little bit dry and scratchy looking and it gives it texture like a hill might have. And then there's over here a little more brownish color. And I don't have to do that just because the hill has that there, but it will show a little bit of texture on the hill. So might as well. I, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything to wreck it. <laughs> So there are a couple little shadows under some of these cows. Like this one has a dark shadow right here, but they're not so important. You know, yeah. when you're looking at them in the painting, they're just little shapes with some shadows underneath them. And I can probably go in later and put some ears, you know, so you can really, looks a little more like a, 
a cow than a, a big rock or something. And then I think these are dry enough. So this this is pretty cool. This spun, this rubber thing, because it just really just lifts it right up, and then you just rub your hand across it and see if it's smooth, and all that all that rubber cement, not rubber cement, masking fluid is gone. I think that's what this is also a rubber cement lifter or something. It does the same thing, but it's easier than your finger because it actually sticks to it and takes it off pretty easily. There, so now you have a nice sunlight background. And then the area under these cows, if this is dry enough, I'm gonna touch it. I'm just being super delicate with it since it's just dry enough. So I don't hurt the paper. And I think the blue sometimes leaves a little bit of bluish stain on it. So that's why some artists prefer the white one. Windsor Newton or another brand, PBO. Uh, Windsor Newton, some of the, you saw how, when I showed you how it, um, this drawing gum, it's not even called masking fluid. Well, it's called liquid frisket, but it's so liquidy. Some of those uh, masking fluids are really thick and they dry hard so in, in the, a very short time. So you can't even use it. I've had those, I don't use them fast enough. But this drawing gum never dries up. It stays good in the bottle for, I've had that, that one for like three years or more. Four years probably. And it's still good. I don't use it often enough. So there, there's, that looks cute. There's little flowers and, and it's just because I did the masking fluid. Masking fluid's good for when you want like a nice flat wash around something. All right, so all the masking fluid's off now. So now you can actually see better what it looks like. And all I have to do for the rest of the painting is put in the little greens inside these spots and then also the purples in the shadow areas, which are where I just took off the masking fluid. This is shadow and then it's white right behind them. So these are all in the shadow here. And I'm just going to add, make it a little bit bluer so it's not only like this pinky purple color, sometimes it could be a little bit bluer. I just don't want to have the same exact color going all the way across. It's nice to switch, switch around. And it's so light, you can barely tell anyway. But this part is shadow here. Oops, it's too much. So I had too much water and too much paint. So I just touched the towel. That's why I always put a towel down when I'm when on the table or whatever I'm painting on. It's just handy to have it right there, you know, to touch the touch the paint off, touch the water off your brush if you need to. Some artists have a um they put like a they cut a sock and they put a sock on their wrist, and that's what they use to. Did you ever see that? There's all kinds of things people do. With watercolor, you need a little some place to take the water off your brush every once in a while. So now I'm just looking at the photo, seeing where there's darker shadows. Darker shadow color. And now it's just like little finishing touches. I guess I could also do, like I spoke about in the beginning was, um, now that this cow is dry, 
he needs some darker. One good thing about using a, um, a iPad to look at your, your subject matter is you can zoom in and see when you get older, your eyes don't work so good anymore. So I like to zoom in and see where do I need to make these shadows now on this cow. So it's on his, I'm not gonna put that tag on his ear. So he has a, a shadow on his ear and then his eye area here. And then it goes up on his head. And then it's on his other ear. What time is it? And you don't need to, when you're putting a layer, another layer of color on top, you don't need to um, make a very dark layer of color because it's it's the it's the the same kind of scenario as if you had two colored pieces of glass, you have a colored piece of glass and you put another color of the same color of glass on top of it and it's gonna be twice as dark. So it's the same kind of thing. I don't need to make a lot of dark color on this and I can, if it's not dark enough, I can do another layer. Later, so I'm gonna just, I should have, I, I could have left that masking fluid on just for your back. Um, but now I now I since I took it off, I'm gonna paint around these little flowers. So I'm gonna lift that right off and do that later when it's dry. But I can go down here. So this cow, so now uh it's a glare, so you can't really see, but if I could go up like that, now you can see like he has some shadow shapes, and I can put some on his body. And I can do another layer later if I need to. And back here, this this cow, he also has some shadows. So I put some dark colors down. Now I'm just taking a clean wet brush and putting, smearing it around a little bit. And then this guy here has some shadow right under his tail. And over here, under his front leg. And then this one also, but this one here, this shadow, so you can soften an edge of a shadow just with a clean, a clean thirsty brush, meaning rinsed in the water, touched onto the towel, and then touch the edge and it soft, it gives you a soft edge if you need one. Under his mouth, under his nose here, he's darker. And then on, on his head and in his ear and on his other ear. So it's probably not as dark as it will be in the end because I could go another pass over it but look at, make it look like an eye there. And it's just, it's not like you really have to, oh, it's in the glare though. It's not like you really have to make it an exact it's a shadow. It's just, you're just, you know, you're not trying to do his eyes and his nose exactly. So yeah, so now I'm just gonna put, he just has a shadow there. So his, it's like a lighter color all along his back and it's darker. So at this point, it's just little final touches like that. What about this shadow, this cow? He, he's darker around his face. They all have darker around their ear and their eye and his neck here is darker. And that just brings out his, 
I think he's the center of attention to that piece. The bottom is in the shadow more than the top of them. Even though they're in the shade, there's reflected light that's hitting them. A little bit over here. It's about it, except for all the little flowers to go back into. So I'm gonna stay over here and do in one more little layer because I still have to do that throughout this area, but there is a little bit of more darker shadows in here. So I could put another few little squiggles in these spots randomly. Not uh, not all the same size, not all, not so you want a var vary a variation of size and distance apart and shape. So it's just all kinds of it's like random little squiggles, and I'm trying to actually fill in the white spots because I don't want to have pure white in the shadow area of the flowers the white, pure whites back here in the sun. So when I'm doing this, that's one of the things I'm doing too, is filling in those little white, mm. little white spots. In the very front here, there's also some more darks. These are more like lupins. I think that's what I'm, I'm thinking of when I'm painting these really, because they're tall and skinny and, mm. So you want to just, I could just make some of those and have the indication of them. Some darker spots for those. So it's a little bit of layering. And if you layer a little bit more of the green also, um, I wouldn't want to do the whole, I want to leave some clear spots but then put some detailed spots. So you have a little bit of each. You don't wanna fill the whole thing in because this looks really nice with uh, a little bit of a break between this, all this detail and down here to have a little bit of um, wa a little wash, wet, in, wet into wet area. So those are the things you think about all the little details, a little bit of a resting place where it's just not a lot of detail. Where's the shadow? Where's the sun? Those kind of things. So it's not finished. It's 8.32, so it's not finished, but I think it's- On its way. <laughs> on it, Well on its way. There's only a little bit more to do to it, so. I thought I might try, I, I thought I might possibly finish, but it, it's it's um 11 by 14, so okay. that's kind of big to try to finish. But you've done so much and I'm, I'm really impressed with this. It looks really nice. <laughs> it was speed painting, yep. Yeah, you work so easily. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to do this because it was a lot of fun. Well, yeah, thank you for, Agreeing to do it. Yeah. Great. This Thank you. Very nice. Thank and, you. Um, do you um, do you give lessons? Yes, on my um, website, I, I I'm taking a break until after the holidays on lessons, but I'm going to mm -hmm. start again in the new year. And um, I showed you my website. I can show you again. I have the. Uh, the subject matter ready to go. You can click the PDF and print it out and then use tracing paper or um, a light box or something to put the image onto your paper, or you can just draw it freehand. This is one that I wanna do. Um, it's a, a vineyard, but I did it plein air. So you see how 
when you are sitting there in front of it, things just look bigger than in the photograph. So this is what I was looking at and this is what I painted. So I drew another one from the painting image to, to paint this one again, because this one was sold a while back and I, I thought it was, I could improve it and do it again. And then this is this one. <laughs> Will you put did. the finished? Will you put the finished uh, cows um, on your website? Yes, I will. Okay. Yep. Good. I Good. have a menu here of all the different subject matter. So the animals. He'll, this this one will go on the animals page. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to show you. This one was the one. The sky turned was just blotchy and no good from watercolor. So I mixed blue watercolor and white gouache and made this smooth sky afterwards. So you can always fix things if your sky doesn't turn out the way you want it. Oh, I did the same thing here. This blue wasn't, I, I didn't like it on the painting. So everything's watercolor on this one, except this sky has blue watercolor and white gouache. Nice. And in uh, a group like California Watercolor Association, you're allowed to use gouache. This is all a gouache, uh, gouache gray sky also, but everything else is watercolor on here. So it's not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some associations, Watercolor West, you have, can only use transparent watercolors. Um, I haven't tried to enter those uh, there um, yet, but I could not put this one in or this one. I could only put the, like this guy's pure watercolor. Most of them are. But I just wanted to show you something. If you did a, a sky that didn't work out, you can fix it with gouache. Now, I don't know if this is too dark or not. Sometimes when I'm done, I just put it aside and look at it for three to four days. And then I see things that I can fix and change. So any other questions? Uh, yeah, Samantha, Marilyn mentioned that you went to SVA. School of Visual Arts. Yeah, School what was of it? Visual Arts in New York. Yes, in New York, yep. Yeah, I knew I knew uh, three instructors there. Oh, um, really? It's been a long time. And they're mostly friends of mine from the comic world, from DC Comics. Um, oh, wow. Sal Amendola, who retired a few years back. Um, they're probably different. They were in drawing and illustration. Uh, Phil Jimenez and Mike Chen. You don't happen to know those. Names, no, I don't remember those names, but um, it when I went, it was early 80s. So it was a long time ago. Uh, well, that was about the time Mike, no, not Mike Chen, but Sal Mandela was working there part time. Anyway, I just yeah. was curious. Yeah, it that was that was really fun to be go to New York City. Oh, well, and yeah, yeah, take classes, and that that's it felt like it felt like I was a real artist, you know, when I was young that way. <laughs> Yeah, well, so most instructors, well, in the drawing department or illustration, a lot of them work for comic books. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I took there. I took a drawing class. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. any instructors? I'm just curious. If, maybe I know their names. No, I don't. Yes, I don't remember those names, but that's oh, really okay. neat. Yeah. Okay, that'd be cool, though. Yep. A small one. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. When I was, uh, after that, after I took some classes there, I never graduated college because I got a job. Instead, I had an opportunity to be an embroidery designer. So my job was drawing all day long. The, oh. the, the garment, um, the, the garment uh, designers would come in and say, here's the shape of a shirt, a top. We want to have embroidery around the neckline. So I would draw the picture of flowers and swirls and things, and the uh -huh. beaders would put the beads on. So I would I would design where the beads and the embroidery goes. It was really fun. Wow. Cool. That's what I did for 15 years in, in New York City. Oh. <laughs> wow. Must have been a hitty time. Yeah. In the city. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. A lot of energy there. Okay. Exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, the more I look at this painting, the 
now I see the white flowers as flowers, where before initially it was just space on the on the paper. Yeah, because of the masking fluid, it's so misleading. Yeah. That's why I really wanted to try to paint that first so it would dry fast enough to take it off so we could really yeah. see. Now they look like flowers. They don't just like yeah. don't look mm -hmm. just like white space on the page on the paper. Yeah, that it turned out okay. I didn't know if it would because the it's such a shadowy picture. And yeah. this whole area in the foreground needs to get darker. Once this is all dark like here, Everything then will these pop. will really pop out even more light. Yeah. So there's too much light in here right now. Yeah. I still have yeah. to go through and and well let us know up. when you finish it and you put it on your site and we'll go have a look. Okay. All right. Yeah, that I'll send nice. you. I'll send you an email. Yeah, and let you know, and you can tell everybody. Great, great. In that case, I'll have to get it finished soon. <laughs> I won't. No, I have, right. I have a stack of. Um, I have a stack of paintings this thick, just paper of not unfinished, but I do want to finish them. Sometimes yeah. they, you know, they just start piling up. <laughs> yeah. but this one i'll i'll work on it yeah because i like it so when you really like something that you you you're doing you want to finish it you know? yeah you do yeah. sometimes you get stuck and you just put it aside and try to do the next one instead mm. but but when you're excited about one and i think this one i i am excited about it i want to finish it so we'll, we'll look forward to that yeah Thank you again for having me. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much, yeah. Samantha. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna Thanks. put you back as the host. Okay. There you are. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.